Have you ever wondered about the real story of Vlad Dracula? Vlad Dracula, a name shrouded in mystery and misconception. His moniker is often associated with tales of vampires and horror, but the man behind the myth was a real historical figure. Vlad, known to his contemporaries as Vlad the Impaler, was a ruler who left an indelible mark on the 15th century. He was the Voivode or ruler of Wallachia, a region that today is part of modern-day Romania. His reign was marked by a fierce and brutal determination to maintain power and independence in a time of political upheaval and conflict. His reputation, however, has often overshadowed his actual deeds. Infamous for his cruel punishments and known to his enemies as a tyrant, his story is as fascinating as it is gruesome. Now, let us delve into the life and times of the real Vlad Dracula. Born in 1431, Vlad Dracula was destined for a life full of conflict and turmoil. Nestled in the heart of Transylvania, in the town of Sigisawara, a baby boy was born to Vlad II Dracul. This child would grow up to be known as Vlad Dracula, a name that would echo through the ages, synonymous with both fear and fascination. Vlad's father was a member of the Order of the Dragon, a chivalric society dedicated to halting the Ottoman Empire's advance into Europe. This affiliation would later inspire Vlad's infamous moniker Dracula, meaning Son of Dracul, or Son of the Dragon. This was a badge he wore with pride as he was always a man who recognized the power of symbols and reputations, however his childhood was not spent in the comfort of his father's castle. Instead at an early age Vlad and his younger brother Radu were sent to the Ottoman Empire as political hostages, a common practice of the time to ensure the loyalty of allied leaders. It was here that Vlad experienced firsthand the harsh realities of political power and manipulation. In the lavish and brutal court of the Ottoman Sultan, Vlad learned the art of war and the ruthiness required of a leader. His days were filled with lessons in horsemanship combat and tactics, while his nights were spent in the gilded cage of his confinement. This experience while harsh and unforgiving, would serve as the anvil upon which the future ruler was forged. His brother Radu on the other hand, adapted to the Ottoman court's life, earning the nickname, Radu the Handsome. He formed a close relationship with the Sultan's son, Mehmed II, a connection that would later put the brothers at odds. The time Vlad spent as a hostage in the Ottoman court was more than just a period of confinement, it was a crucible, shaping and hardening him. His experiences there, the lessons he learned about power, fear and survival, would profoundly influence his rule and his approach to leadership. These early experiences would shape Vlad into the ruler he would become. These formative years marked by hardship and adversity were instrumental in molding Vlad Dracula, the man who would become a legend. Vlad Dracula's path to power was far from straightforward. Indeed the journey to the throne of Wallachia, a historical and geographical region of Romania, was as treacherous as they come. Born into a world of political strife and constant warfare, Vlad was thrust into the tumultuous landscape of 15th century Eastern Europe. His ascension to power was not a simple coronation, it was a brutal and bloody battle for survival. Rival factions vied for control of Wallachia, and Vlad found himself in the center of this power struggle. His first reign was short-lived lasting only two months before he was ousted by rival nobles. But Vlad was not so easily defeated, he bided his time, honed his strategies, and returned with a vengeance. His second reign, beginning in 1456, was when his true colors began to show. He ruled with an iron fist, employing fear as a weapon as potent as any sword or spear. He was known for his brutal punishments and had a particular fondness for impalement, a grisly method of execution that became his gruesome trademark. But even this reign was not to last. Once again he was driven from his throne, only to claw his way back to power a third time. His final reign was as brutal as the ones before, marked by the same savage displays of power and authority. Throughout his reigns, Vlad Dracula proved himself not just a ruler, but a tactician, a warrior, and a terror. He understood the power of fear, and used it to his advantage, maintaining control over his subjects through sheer terror. His methods were savage, his rule was ruthless, and his reign was marked by bloodshed. Vlad's rule was marked by a reign of terror, which earned him a fearsome reputation. This reputation, earned through blood and fear, would immortalize him in history, transforming him from a mere man into a legend, a myth, a monster. And thus the legacy of Vlad Dracula was born. With the throne under his control, Vlad Dracula's reign was one of terror and bloodshed. As he claimed the seat of power, 
Vlad Dracula unleashed a wave of atrocities that would forever mark his rule as one of the darkest periods in history. His tenure was stained with the blood of countless victims, their lives claimed in the most gruesome ways. Vlad's preferred method of execution was impalement, a slow and cruel death that served as a chilling symbol of his ruthlessness. The victims were hoisted onto sharp stakes, their bodies left on display as a warning to anyone who dared to defy him. It was this macabre spectacle that earned him the moniker, Vlad the Impaler. But Vlad's reign was not solely defined by internal terror. On the international stage he found himself embroiled in a bitter conflict with the formidable Ottoman Empire. The tension between Vlad and the Ottomans had been simmering for years, and it finally erupted into full-blown war. Vlad, despite his smaller forces, was not one to back down easily. He fought with the ferocity of a man possessed, his brutal tactics sending shockwaves through the Ottoman ranks. Yet it wasn't just his military prowess that struck fear into the hearts of his enemies. Vlad was infamous for his psychological warfare. He would leave the impaled bodies of his victims outside his castle walls, a grim welcome for any invading forces. This gruesome display was not only a demoralizing sight for the enemy, but it also served as a potent symbol of Vlad's absolute power and his willingness to use it without mercy. His reign, though relatively short, left an indelible mark on the pages of history. The tales of his atrocities continue to echo through time, painting a vivid picture of a ruler whose thirst for power knew no bounds. Vlad's cruel methods of ruling left a lasting impression on his subjects and enemies alike. His reign remains a chilling testament to the depths of human cruelty, a dark chapter forever etched in the annals of history. Like all rulers, Vlad Dracula's reign had to end. The man who had once held such power in Wallachia, who had struck fear into the hearts of his enemies, eventually found himself on the losing side of the power struggle. Vlad's fall from power was as dramatic as his rise. In the late 1460s, his ruthless rule sparked an uprising among the boyars, the nobility of Wallachia, leading to his capture and imprisonment. Yet, even within the confines of the prison cell, Vlad's spirit remained unbroken. His desire for power was as strong as ever, and he began plotting his return. After years of imprisonment, Vlad was released, his freedom a political pawn in the ever-shifting game of alliances and power plays. His mind set on reclaiming his throne he rallied an army and marched towards Wallachia. But fate had other plans. In a cruel twist of irony, Vlad Dracula, the man renowned for his military prowess and strategic brilliance, met his end on the battlefield. His life was cut short in a clash against the Ottomans. The exact circumstances of his death remain shrouded in mystery, adding a final touch of intrigue to his larger-than-life story. Even in death, Vlad continued to perplex and fascinate. His body was reportedly buried at Snagov Monastery yet subsequent excavations yielded no trace of his remains. Some say his body was moved while others speculate that he was never there in the beginning. This mystery surrounding his final resting place only adds to the enigma that is Vlad Dracula. The man who was Vlad Dracula, ruler, warrior, prisoner, lived a life marked by power struggles, personal conflicts, and an unquenchable thirst for control. His story is as captivating as it is chilling, a testament to the human capacity for ambition, cruelty, and resilience. Vlad Dracula's life was marked by power, conflict, and a thirst for control. And even in death, his legend continues to thrive, a haunting reminder of a man who once held Wallachia in his iron grip. Vlad Dracula's legacy is one that still captivates us today. The life and exploits of this 15th century ruler have permeated our collective consciousness, largely through Bram Stoker's iconic novel Dracula. Stoker's bloodthirsty count, while a work of fiction, was undoubtedly inspired by the real-life Vlad's reputation for ferocity and cruelty. This amalgamation of fact and fiction has had a profound impact on popular culture, giving birth to an entire genre of vampire fiction and films that continue to thrill audiences worldwide. In Romania, Vlad's homeland, he is remembered somewhat differently. Despite his brutal methods many Romanians regard him as a national hero who defended the land against invaders. His rule, though harsh, is seen as a period of strong leadership and relative stability. Vlad Dracula, a ruler whose life was as fascinating as it was terrifying, continues to capture our imagination centuries later. His story serves as a potent reminder of the thin line between heroism and horror, between power and tyranny.